Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to our live today. Happy Monday. It's Monday. Okay. Hello. Hi, Jacob. Wow, so nice to have you on here. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm glad to be here. Oh, so exciting. <laughs> How's your day been so far? Pretty good. Just going through emails, scheduling my week. Yeah, that's good. Love that for you. Um, we can just wait for a few minutes for people to join in. Um, let's see, what time is it right now? 102. So we can start at like 103, 104. So hello, everyone. Waves, waves, waves. Yeah, feels like a Monday. <laughs> but you know, we're here. Yes, we are. Okay. I do have to pin a comment. All right, there. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Are you all set? You're good? Okay. All right, we can go ahead and get started. All right, so hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ibuko Olua Amale, and I am an AmeriCorps fellow at Whitman Walker, and I do social media outreach as well as HIV testing, um, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, Jacob, can you introduce yourself to the platform? <laughs> My name is Jacob, and I also use he, him pronouns, and I work at Latin American Youth Center. Awesome. Um, so during this past year, Whitman Walker Community Health Department has expanded its outreach out efforts to the social media platform. Um, so we're going to cover various topics ranging from HIV, STI, sexual health practices to access to care, um, social determinants of health, um, and as well as just general public health interventions. Um, and today we're actually starting to celebrate National Latinx HIV AIDS Awareness Day a little bit early. Um, we are aware that it's on October 15th, but I just wanted to um, highlight different organizations that are doing amazing work in the DC area or in the DMV area. Um, and I just really wanted to showcase the work they're doing. So that's why I have Jacob here with us to talk to us about his work and what his organization, um, Latin American Youth Center, what they're doing. So I'm really excited to learn more about your organization. Um, so I just have a few questions to ask you and everyone watching, you can leave any questions you have for Jacob and he'll try his best to answer them. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So my first question for you, Jacob, is what does your organization do and what is your role in your organization? Yeah. So the Latin American Youth Center is a little different from Whitman Walker because we're not specifically a health organization. We have a lot of different programs varying from housing, academics, job readiness, recreation, advocacy, and then, of course, our health and wellness. Um, and one of the unique things, too, is that as a youth center, we target our age population is 13 to 24, but um, we do, we never turn people down for services, at least in the health and wellness department. So going off of that, I work in the health promotions team, um, where one of the main things that we offer is free HIV, STI, UTI, and pregnancy testing. And that's walk-in hours, 3 to 6 p.m., Monday through Thursday. Um, so we're always happy to test people when they come in. Um, our department also has reproductive health initiatives, sexual health education here at our building and also in schools. And we also have some parenting cohorts and diaper distribution programs. Um, so yeah, so my role specifically is in the health promotions team. I'm a tester um, and then I just work up with my team to do outreach and other um, health promotion events. Okay, that's really awesome to know that you guys are another resource for the community to go to. Because um, I know one thing that a lot of the people that we have come to Whitman Walker, they always ask about like walk-in appointments for HIV and STI testing. And we currently don't do that, but it's nice that 
your organization is able to offer that. So, you know, we could always refer people to um, the Latin American Youth Center. Um, so I guess my next question for you is, so why is celebrating National Latinx HIV AIDS Awareness Day important? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to your organization? Um, yeah, just. Yeah, um, it's, I think it's definitely important that we recognize the diversity of those affected with HIV AIDS. I Historically, we all know that there's been a lot of stigma that it's associated just with the LGBTQ community, but HIV rates today show that it's not just an LGBTQ issue, not just um, one population. It's really anyone that is sexually active can be affected by HIV. And so, especially in DC, where the second highest proportion within a population is within Latinx men for HIV and AIDS. So um, it's important that we recognize that it's everyone can be affected. And um, especially here in DC, there's lots of different prevention methods and treatments. And it's important to know what ways to keep yourself safe. Um, so we really look to this as a way to make sure that all of our community is engaged in their sexual health and especially around their knowledge of their HIV status. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, that was a good statistic to know because I mean, like you said, there's like different communities are affected by HIV and AIDS in different ways. And I think it's, <clears throat> it's important to note that um, the Latinx community or especially Latinx, Latin men um, are the ones that are being affected a lot by HIV AIDS. Um, so after learning that, what ways can we celebrate um, National Latinx HIV Awareness Day in a respectful manner? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so in a logistical way, getting tested is, as an individual, the number one thing you can do because as someone that's sexually active, it's important to always know your status regardless of who you're having sex with, how many partners you have. So getting tested, encouraging others to get tested, um, learning and educating others on the different prevention methods, which I'm, sh um, I'm sure you've all talked about PrEP and PEP on here before, um, that there are resources just to really make sure that the community is engaged with those things. And promoting organizations like LAYC that provide services to the communities that are affected by HIV and Whitman Walker as well. So um, yeah, along with that, um, there's a CDC campaign called Stop HIV Together. So if you're promoting any of these organizations, great that hashtag. Um, and the CDC website also has um, a lot of resources. And one thing to also note is that um, when promoting these things, to be inclusive with your language, especially in Spanish, um, there's many resources that the CDC has to, that are also in Spanish. And this is important because 44% of DC residents that speak a language other than English at home speak Spanish at home. So that amounts to 9% of the total DC population. So that's almost one in 10 people. Um, so it's important to have these resources available to them because if we're only using English, then we're missing out on people that are just as likely, if not more likely to be exposed to HIV. So um, yeah, definitely in terms of celebrating, make sure we are talking about testing and using Spanish and any other language to reach more communities. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for reminding me um, about that, because especially when I'm creating like content, I tend to just, you know, think about it in like English, but it's also important that I'm able to create content that is available in other languages, because like you said, every voice matters and every person matters and like, you know, just because they're not an English speaker doesn't mean they're not worthy to learn about um, health issues that could be affecting them. So thank you so much for reminding me to be more aware and um, be more inclusive with the language. Um, so you've mentioned ways we could at large just like celebrate National Latinx um, HIV AIDS Awareness Day. How could we particularly support your specific organization? Um, are there any ways we could volunteer or, you know, provide funding or what ways can we um, support LAYC and their mission? Yeah, so particularly this week, LAYC actually has a silent auction going on. So on there, there's lots of things for sale and raffles to enter. So that's a unique thing that doesn't happen all year. So if you're able to, to definitely look into that. If you search LAYC silent auction, it should come up on Google. Um, otherwise, you can donate. Um, 
And then in terms of volunteering, we're still kind of transitioning back to being in person. So we're not really looking for volunteers right now, but once um, we're more adjusted and we have more of our COVID safe precautions in place to definitely be on the lookout to volunteer with us. Um, and then of course, if you're in or near the Columbia Heights area, always come on by for a free test if you want. Um, we're here three to six, as I said, Monday through Thursday. Okay. Um, so I have one more question for you. Could you just give us more information about what the process is like to get tested at LAYC? I think that would be important for the viewers. Um, and I also don't know if you're comfortable doing this, but maybe you could say it in Spanish as well, in case if we do have, um, you know, Spanish speaking watchers watch, um, watch, listening on the live right now. Um, I think that would be important information if you can. <laughs> So first, um, if you go to the LAYC Health Programs Instagram, all of everything that is on that Instagram is in both English and Spanish. Okay. So these are, that's kind of our place where we post information. Um, but in terms of getting tested, um, you just come to LAYC between those hours. We have to fill out a form that asks for some general demographic information, and it, you can send to which tests you want to do. Um, and then it's a one-on-one -on -one situation and you come and get tested with us. And we also do a counseling session. There's mm -hmm. also free condoms, lube, and um, insertive condoms. Also, okay. condoms. So we have those resources available. And then there's also, if you get positive results, we link you to care, especially if there's um, an STI result. We also have a nurse practitioner that comes in on Thursdays. So if we get positive results, we link you to care and you can come get free treatment with us at LAYC. Um, so that's kind of our main thing. I would say um, I'll refer you to the Instagram in Spanish live translations, a little tricky, <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, I think that was a great explanation and um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so just this is the time that we're going to take any questions from our viewers. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat um we can just wait a few seconds to see if anyone has any questions <laughs> thank you so much jacob by the way this is awesome happy to be here okay well you had a few shout outs um uh, I, a few, I see. jennifer <laughs> said proud of you jacob <laughs> thanks or, sis. Hard <laughs> yes. um Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any questions, but if you do end up thinking of anything, please go check out LAYC's Instagram. Um, I'm sure you can give them a call if you have any questions. Um, and once again, thank you so much, Jacob, for coming in today. So before we go, I just have to do a few reminders about um, the COVID-19 pandemic that we're still in and the vaccine. Um, so if you've already been vaccinated, congrats, you've taken a really important step to preventing yourself, your loved ones, and your communities from illness. And as we know, there's a lot of different variants going around. So we completely understand if you want to continue wearing your mask. Um, so just keep staying alert. And if you haven't been vaccinated and you are looking for an appointment, we do want to let you know that Women Walker does offer the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so anyone ages 12 and up is eligible to receive the vaccine. So you could just call us at 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. And if you live in DC, um, you can call 1-855-363-0333. If you're in Maryland, you can call 855-634-6829. And if you live in Virginia, you can call 877-829-4682. And if you haven't been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, we do wanna urge you to continue to follow the CDC guidelines for wearing your mask, quarantining, social distancing, and everything else. Um, it's really important that you practice these um, CDC guidelines um, to protect yourself and the people around you because you don't know who has been vaccinated and who hasn't been. Um, and finally, if you would like to support Women Walker, in about two weeks now, wait, yeah, in about a week and a half, two weeks, um, we're having our annual walk to end HIV on October 23rd. Um, and this is on Saturday. And this year it's virtual, so you don't have to worry about um, you know, being in a large space with people. Um, you can do this by yourself with a group of 
a group of your friends. Um, and it's a virtual run this year. So you can register at walktoendhiv.org. And finally, um, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, um, at Whitman Walker, and you can check out our website, www.whitman-walker.org, for the most up-to-date information about our services and the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you so much, Jacob, again. Thank you for just being amazing, and thank you so much, LAC, for coming. <laughs> um, it was nice talking to you, and I will talk to you later. Hey, bye. Everyone, bye. <laughs>